In my research, I found that self-made millionaires possess a series of qualities. If you have these qualities, your success is virtually guaranteed. And even if you don't currently possess them, the good news is that they can be learned. Firstly, it's important to understand that all business or sales skills are learnable. Similarly, all financial skills can be acquired. Just as you can learn to drive a car, you can learn any skill necessary for success. Now point number two. You're probably only one skill away from doubling your income. Yes, it's true. You're likely just one skill away from putting yourself on the path to becoming a self-made millionaire. And if you're not sure what that skill is, perhaps it will become evident as we spend time together. Whatever it may be, you need to identify it and start working on it, because it is indeed learnable. Some may say, I've never been good with money. Well, it's time to change that mindset. The fact is, you can learn whatever you need to achieve your goals. As one of my seminar participants put it, money is like food. When you have enough, you don't think about it. But when you're deprived of it, it consumes your thoughts. More people are achieving financial independence and becoming self-made millionaires at a faster rate than ever before. And the majority of them are first-generation success stories. This means they started with little or nothing and earned their wealth from scratch. The fact that so many others have gone from rags to riches is proof that you can do it too. You just need to learn how. Becoming a self-made millionaire can be relatively simple. For instance, if you save just $100 per month from the age of 20 to 65 and invest it wisely, you could amass a significant sum by the time you retire. Ultimately, the most successful people in society are those who have a long-term perspective. They think and plan decades into the future, organizing their daily activities in alignment with their long-term goals. They think and plan 10, 20 and even 40 years into the future. Then, they organize their daily and weekly activities in such a way that everything they do is consistent with the long-term goals they want to achieve. This is especially true regarding achieving financial independence. Everyone has a series of goals, whether clear or fuzzy. Each of these goals is organized in a hierarchy, consciously or unconsciously, from the most important to the least important. The reason people fail to achieve financial independence is that, although it's a goal, it often isn't their primary goal. It's just one of many goals they think about from time to time. When it's time to act or spend, their other goals, like immediate pleasure and gratification, take precedence. It's only when you elevate the goal of financial independence to the top of your hierarchy of values that you begin to gain control of your financial life. Remember the great principle, you become what you think about most of the time. In thousands of interviews, researchers have found that self-made millionaires think about financial independence most of the time. They organize their entire lives around saving, accumulating, and continually seeking ways to earn, acquire, invest, and deploy their savings. The fact is, you're not going to win the lottery or inherit a large sum of money from a distant relative. The only way to achieve financial independence is with a long-term perspective by consistently saving and investing your money month after month and year after year, until you've accumulated enough to never worry about money again. For most people, money represents freedom, one of the highest human values. It enables you to be and do what you want, and to buy what you need without worrying about the cost. Freedom is a powerful driving force that has shaped human history. So, what are your personal values regarding money? It's essential to note that negative values concerning money can sabotage you throughout your life. One of the wisest things you can do is to admire, respect, and look up to people who have achieved financial success. You tend to move in the direction of what you admire and respect. The more you admire and respect financial success, the more likely you are to emulate the behaviors of financially successful people and eventually become financially successful yourself. Imagine your financial life was perfect in every respect. Picture your distant financial future as if every financial dream had been realized. What does it look like? How much would you like to be worth when you retire or stop working? What kind of lifestyle would you like to have at that time? How much will you have to save and invest every month, every year, to reach your long-term financial goals? These are questions that most people seldom ask or answer. Imagine that you have no limitations on your long-term ability to achieve financial independence. Imagine that you have all the time and all the resources you require, all the knowledge and experience you need, and all the contacts and opportunities you could ask for. If you could design your financial life to be perfect in every way, with no limitations, what would it look like? 
Imagine that you have finally achieved a net worth of $10 million. What would you do? How would you change your life if you were completely financially independent? Make up a dream list of every single thing you would want in your life, tangible and intangible, if you had all the money you would ever need. The greater clarity you have regarding your long-term financial future, the faster you will attract the people and resources that you will need to achieve it into your life, and the more rapidly you will realize your vision. In general, you should have four financial goals. First, you want to earn as much as you can. Second, you want to spend as little as you can. Third, you want to save and invest as much as possible. Fourth, you want to protect yourself against unexpected reversals and lawsuits. The achievement of each of these goals is very much under your control. Perhaps the best measure you can use if financial independence is your goal, is to determine how much money you will need each month, each year, to live comfortably, and then calculate how long you could sustain your current lifestyle on your current savings. This number is called your run rate, or your burn rate. It's a calculation of how long you can survive with what you have accumulated up to now, and it's the best measure of your overall financial health. This is a great focal point. Set clear financial goals and targets for each part of your financial life, both for the short term and for the long term. Examine every expenditure in your life and look for ways to reduce your monthly living costs. Set a goal to cut your expenses by 10 or 20% over the next 90 days. Make cost control and cost cutting a regular part of your life, no matter how much you earn. Since you become what you think about most of the time, the more time you spend thinking about your money, the better you will become in terms of managing it. The first knowledge that you will require to achieve financial independence is the knowledge of exactly how much you are earning today, how much you are spending each month, and how much you are worth right now. You should keep a list of every dollar you spend and analyze your list regularly. The more attention you pay to your day-to-day -day spending, the smarter and more aware you will become regarding the amount of money flowing through your fingers. It's a rule that will virtually guarantee that you become wealthy over the course of your working lifetime. Save and invest 50% of any increase that you earn in your salary or compensation for the rest of your career. You can still spend the other 50% of the increase on improving your standard of living, but resolve today to save half of every increase for the rest of your career. This discipline alone will assure that you achieve financial independence, and probably several years before you expect to. Apply the 80-20 rule to your job every day. Identify the 20% of your tasks that account for 80% of the value of everything you do. Resolve to focus more and more of your attention on becoming better and better at those few activities that are worth more than all the while. Rest. There are certain habits and behaviors that lead inevitably to financial success. The first and most important habit is for you to pay yourself first. As George Klassen wrote in his classic book, The Richest Man in Babylon, a part of all you earn is yours to keep. Pay yourself first off the top. Your goal is to eventually save 10% to 20% of your income throughout your life. Your aim should be to put this amount away regularly, to invest it with experts, and to let it grow over time. If you cannot afford to save 10% of your income, begin by saving 1% of your income. Begin saving and investing even before you pay off your debts. Begin putting money away before you pay down the amounts that you owe. This is very important. By developing the habit of saving a certain percentage of what you earn off the top of every single paycheck, you will eventually change your entire attitude towards yourself and money. The most important habit you can develop to achieve financial independence is the habit of frugality. Carefully consider every expense before you make it. If possible, Delay a large purchase for a day, a week, a month, or even longer. Take that time to think about it before you commit. Perhaps the most helpful habit of all is for you to learn to enjoy the very act of saving and investing. When you begin to look forward to every opportunity to put money away, you change your entire attitude toward money and investments. You begin to get tremendous pleasure and satisfaction from seeing your savings and investments grow over time. There are four activities that you should engage in every single day to guarantee that you achieve financial independence. The first is to carefully evaluate every expenditure before you make it. Delay every expenditure that you possibly can. Put it off until later, if you make it at all. The second thing that you should do is to set clear goals and targets for the amounts that you intend to earn and keep. Measure your results against these targets every week and every month. What gets measured gets done. 
The third activity is for you to look for ways to reduce your monthly expenditures and instead save the money. Cut out all non-essential expenses. Keep asking yourself, do I really need this? And if you don't, don't buy it or don't spend it. Set it as a goal to reduce your monthly cost of living by as much as you can as quickly as possible. Remember, every dollar that you can save from your monthly expenses is an additional dollar that you can put into your financial freedom account. The fourth activity is for you to take every opportunity that you possibly can to increase your value, to increase your earning ability. Look for ways to upgrade your knowledge and skills. Concentrate on getting better at those activities that contribute the greatest value to yourself and your company. Become totally focused on making more and saving more every single day. Financial success is predictable. It has never been more possible for you to earn and keep more money than it is today. There are hundreds of thousands and even millions of self-made millionaires, all of whom started with nothing and who began using the practices and processes described in this session. Your job is to become one of them. Begin today. Imagine that there are two types of work that you do. There's work that we will call work number one. This work is work that has big potential consequences. If you do this and you do it well, it makes a big difference in your life and your family and everything else. The other type of work you do are what we call two number two work. This work has no potential consequences. So, the first category of work moves you toward your most important goals faster than anything else. This other type of work does not move you toward your goals, and even worse, it moves you away from your goals. All the examples of time that you waste doing things of no value. Here's a simple way to become one of the highest paid and most productive people in society. Do only number one tasks. Do only those things that are moving you every day toward the goals that you say you want to achieve. If you only do those things, the things that have great potential consequences, it transforms your life. Now here's another discovery. 95% of what you do comes from habit. And if you do something repeatedly over and over again, what do you develop? You develop a new habit. You've heard the rule, the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, where the top 20% of salespeople make 80% of the sales, and the bottom 80% of salespeople make 20% of the sales. Do you know what the difference the ratio is there? The ratio is the difference between 16 to 1. The average income of people in the top 20% is 16 times the average income of the people in the bottom 80%. Now let me ask you a question. Does it mean that the people in the top 20% are 16 times better than the people in the bottom 80%? 16 times more experienced? Do they work 16 times the number of hours? Do they have 16 times the number of years of education? Are they 16 times more handsome? Are they 16 times anything? You know that it's not humanly possible to be twice as smart as somebody else. I'm not sure if you're looking at very, very unintelligent people and very, very brilliant people, which is really not humanly possible, on average, for us to even be twice as smart as anybody else. But 20% of these people are making 16 times the average in our society. It is a lot of controversy over why should I work so hard for my job. The fact of the matter is that less than 5% really succeed. That's less than 5% of the population really succeeds at life. If I have 100 people working today, only one will be wealthy when they retire. Four will be financially independent. Fifteen will have some savings. Eighty percent will be broke and dependent upon charities and pensions. Only one or two percent of people in each generation really make it in life. And in every single study, those people who make it are those who work hard, hard, hard. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money dependent upon pensions, and you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self-made millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a week. I'll tell you this, with regard to hard work, that you and our society only work 8 hours a day for survival. Everything over 8 hours is for success. And if you're only working 8 hours a day, you're in trouble. If you're only working 8 hours a day, you better have a rich uncle, or you better have somebody else who's going to take care of you, because 8 hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Because it's so competitive that somebody else is working 9. They've got an edge on you. Somebody else is working 10. They've got a bigger edge on you. Every hour over 8 that you invest is an investment in your future, is an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over 8, whether it's studying or reading or working, if you put in the hours, it will pay off. 
and it will pay off in spades. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed, it's hundreds of seeds. There's a crop that you put in, but you must put the seed in the ground first. The market only pays excellent rewards for excellent performance. It pays average rewards for average performance. It pays below average rewards for below average performance. And I talk to men and women all over America, who are unhappy and sad, and they don't like their work. And you know why? It's because they're not good at what they're doing. So, your earning ability is the most powerful and most valuable financial asset you have. And your earning ability, by definition, is your ability to get results that people will pay you for. Now this doesn't mean that you are not a valuable person. Each human being is of incredible value. But some people's earning ability is much higher than others. And your earning ability is an asset. Though it can be either increasing in value or decreasing in value. Now here's what the studies have found. The 80-20 rule. They found that the bottom 80% of people, the ones who struggle for money and worry about money all their lives, these people when they take their first job, will work to a certain level, and then they will level off and never improve for the rest of their lives unless they're forced to. And so therefore, 10 years after starting work, the average person today is no more productive at getting results than they were after one year. But they find that the people in the top 20% are very different. The people in the bottom 80% increase their income about 2 or 3% per year over the years. The top 20% increase their income at an average of about 11% per year. If your income goes up 11% per year, you will double your income every 6 or 7 years. And then you will double it again, and then you'll double it again, and soon you live in a beautiful house, and you drive a nice car, and you send your children to private schools, and you have a nice bank account, and you'll be happy. But if you don't keep increasing your income, nothing good will happen. Now what is the difference? The answer is, the people in the bottom 80% don't learn anymore after they leave school. But the people in the top 20% are always learning new things. And as a result, they are increasing their earning ability. People in the top 10% in every field think in terms of their hourly rate, how much they earn each hour. Now this change in thinking changes your entire life. I know because I've taught this principle to thousands of people who literally transform their lives and their incomes almost overnight. If you think in terms of how much you earn in a week or a month, well then, you have a natural tendency to waste time during the day. Monday is a slow day. You're recovering from the weekend. Tuesday, you start to work. Wednesday, the week is almost over. Thursday, you start to slow down, and now it's Friday. Who gets anything done on Friday? We'll do it on Monday. So, people's ability to produce drops, 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 and since 80% of the population thinks like this, if you're not careful, you'll find you are surrounded by people who waste time. When you start thinking in terms of your hourly rate, it transforms your life. Poor folks have poor ways. It's really hard to get over poor folks' poor ways. Always remember that poor folks have poor ways. They think poor, they think cheap, they think saving is spending as little as possible, and they think about the little money they have. But you find that successful people have successful thinking. They think very, very differently than poor people. So remember, poor folks have poor ways, but rich folks have rich ways. It's because people who make a lot of money, like my friend Jim Rohn said, the most important part of becoming a millionaire is not the money, but it's the person you have to become to become a millionaire. You have to become a totally different person to go from zero to being worth more than a million dollars. But the good news is that if you lost all of your money because of a crash in the economy or something else, you can make it all back again because now you're the kind of person who can make it. Once you become a millionaire in your thinking, then it's only a matter of time before you quickly restore that amount of money in your reality. So, the starting point is to change our thinking, which we have said over and over again, and I've written extensively on this. But the path of least resistance is a really big killer. It's the tendency to look for the easy way, the fast way, the cheap way. The method of least effort or least cost to achieve things. And what we have in our society today, as a result of several generations of affluence, is an enormous number of people who are literally addicted to the shortcut, the easy way, the fast, quick way. There's an old saying with regard to these get-rich-quick schemes. When a man with experience meets a man with money, the man with money is going to end up with the experience, and the man with experience will end up with the money. So you'll find that the newspapers, magazines, and television are all full of get-rich-quick schemes because there are always people who think it's possible to get rich quick.
Get rich easy. All you have to do is find a trick or a gimmick. And there's an enormous number of people who say, rich people are just lucky. They just had a gimmick. They just had a trick. The fact is that the rich have been studied at great length. It takes about 22 years from the time you decide to become a millionaire before you hit a million dollars net worth. I think it's about 22 years on average, based on the studies of many thousands and tens of thousands of self-made millionaires. People say, wow, that's a long time. If it is, get on with it. So people start at 20. By the age of 42, they're millionaires. By the age of 45, they're dual millionaires. By the age of 50 or 55, because as we say, the first million is hard, the second million is inevitable. So, what you do is you have to make the first million. Why? Because you have to become a very different, disciplined, higher form of human being to actually make such a contribution that you actually earn and hold on to more than a million dollars. It forces you to become somebody really different than you've ever been before. Financial freedom is a real big issue today. Financial freedom means that you don't worry about money. Worries about money, by the way, are the number one reason for marital breakdown. Worries, disagreements, arguments over money. So if you have problems with money, they affect your relationship. If you have problems in your relationship, they affect your health. If you have problems with your health, it affects your peace of mind. And money is a major issue. We've been living through the most affluent country in the most affluent time in all of human history for the last 50 years. We've grown up in a level of affluence that is unimaginable for 95% of the world. And we have come to believe that this is what we're entitled to. You grow up in America. You're entitled to a fat life. One of the things that is leading to major social disruptions is a lot of people are finding that it's not true anymore. If you want to be financially successful, you won't have to work very, very hard. You're going to have to get up early and hit it hard and work all day and work into the evening. You're going to have to work six days a week. There's no wealthy people who work five days a week. None. There's no successful people who work five days a week. Because if you work five days a week, you actually only work about four. And you start late, you leave early, and you waste time all day long. Successful people work long days. And they work into the weekends. However, they're doing something they enjoy. And they're doing something they get tremendous satisfaction from because they're making progress. And as a result, it's really not work. You know the old rule? I found something I love to do, and I never worked again the rest of my life. I worked seven days a week, but I never worked a day. And you'll find that when you do that, which you will before we're finished, when you start to find what it is that you would love to do, and put your whole heart into it, you never work again. And you get paid more than you ever dreamed of. And you don't even care. You don't even count the money anymore because you're just getting so much satisfaction from using yourself at the very highest level. So financial freedom, this is something we people have to start thinking about. The worst thing you can do today is to be in debt. As you know, as they say, the debt comes and goes, but the interest payments stay forever. And it's the interest that kills you. It's the constant payment. Look at that. The one of our goals is to achieve financial freedom. And this isn't something that happens by accident. We don't say, well, geez, I'm not sure I'm financially free this morning. No. But what we have to do is we have to set it down and make a plan. And we have to work on it for a long, long time. It's not something you can do once. It's something you need to do throughout your career. And too many people today are deeply in debt. You know that 70% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck? 70% of Americans. What that means is that they have no money. They have no reserves. The average American family, at the age of 40, for the major breadwinner, has a total net worth of about $40,000. And that's including the equity in their home. At the age of 60, they have a net worth of about $62,000. An average of about $1,000 a year. Most people without pensions, that's why there's so much political controversy. Without pensions, most people would be destitute. They'd be impoverished because they have nothing. 70% have nothing. Why? It's not because they haven't earned a lot of money. You know that if you save $100 a month for your entire working lifetime, you'd be worth more than a million dollars when you retire? $100 a month? If somebody put a gun to your head, could you save $100 a month? Well, it does. And people don't even save that. They spend it. They buy stuff they don't need to impress people they don't like. So here's where we start with our entrepreneurs. We say there are four keys. One is to clarify. 
Clarity is 95% of your success. Be absolutely clear about who you are, what you want, and your goals. Second is to simplify. Simplify means to delegate, outsource, and eliminate low value. No value tasks and activities in your life. In other words, look at the things you do in your life that contribute very little, very little to your success, but you keep doing them anyway. And you'll find that about 80% of your life is trivia. Remember the 80-20 rule. 20% of what you do accounts for 80% of your results, success, rewards, satisfaction, happiness, joy. Everything is in the top 20%, which means the bottom 80% could be cut out completely and have no negative effect on your life. What do most people spend most of their time on? Bottom 80%. You know, television watching, since the last time we did this seminar just a few months ago. At that time it was 150 hours a month for the average adult in America. It's up to 158 hours in less than a year. Average Americans watching five and a half to six hours, jumping up over five hours of television per day. Average non-adult, what is on social media, five hours a day. Television watching, by the way, for young people is dropping dramatically. The networks are going bonkers. But it's older people who are not high tech. They watch television five hours a day. Just imagine if you took two of those hours and you read something worthwhile. You'd be rich in a few years. Television makes you poor. They did an interesting study. They took people, socioeconomic categories, Wall Street Journal. They found as you went down the socioeconomic categories to the poorest of the poor, they had no books in their homes and the biggest televisions they could afford. As you went up to the top, and they watched about seven hours of television a day. As the band began to go up in terms of income, television watching decreased until they got to the top five or ten percent. These people, it's very seldom watch television. They would pre-record something and watch it at their leisure later on in the evenings or on the weekends. Very seldom watch television and their homes were full of books. So if you wanted to get into the top 10%, what you do is you have to do things that the top 10% of people do. Thank you. The rules for achieving financial independence are simple. Rule number one is spend less than you earn. Five words. And then save or invest the difference. This has always been the case. This is the key to financial success going back to the richest man in Babylon by Clayson more than 2,000 years ago. You can be a blithering idiot at an average job, working at a gas station, or on the farm, or driving a truck at an average wage. But if you save $100 a month on average from age 20 to age 65, and let it accumulate, you'll be worth more than a million dollars. $100 a month, $25 a week, or less than $4 a day. About the same amount as mine, a latte coffee at Starbucks. Can you do that? Okay, well do lots of other things, but do that for sure. Now rule number two for achieving financial independence is that 10% of every dollar you earn is yours to keep. What this means is that you need to develop a habit from the beginning of your career and throughout of cutting 10% off the top of your salary and living on the other 90%. Most people get their paycheck and they spend most of it. If there's anything left over, they throw it in the bank temporarily and then they grab it out and spend it on something else. They look at their bank account and shout, gee, we've got money here, let's burn it. Some people have just got to kill, get rid of the money. Rule number three is resolve in advance to prefer financial independence to status. The work in the millionaire next door found that the mark of self-made millionaires is that they weren't concerned about impressing the neighbors or keeping up with the Joneses. They were more concerned with financial independence than by looking good on the outside, at least until they became wealthy. So say to yourself, financial independence is number one to me, and status is number two or three or four or ten. Then be willing to stick to it. It's absolutely amazing what will happen to you financially. You know what we found out about self-made millionaires? They never buy new cars. Why? Because in a new car, there's several thousand dollars of depreciation that's money that you lose the minute you drive it off the line. So what self-made millionaires do, based on interviews with thousands of them, is they pick a car they really like. They follow it in Consumer Reports and JD Power for quality and service, and then about two to three years out, they look for used models with low mileage and good service records, and then they buy a car that 20 to 25 percent in depreciation has already been taken out of. I've worked with a man once who started with nothing, and achieved a net worth of $800 million. Now, he lived in a nice middle-class neighborhood, you know, with doctors and lawyers and architects, but not ostentatious. 
but the people living on either side of him were just two paychecks away from homelessness. If their income was cut off for two months, they wouldn't be able to make their mortgage payments. I watched this guy. He drove the same used car for three or four years. He liked Cadillacs. So you get a nice Cadillac, take good care of it. Then you'd get another used or loaner vehicle from a dealership, so that it had already been depreciated. He was never ostentatious at all. And he ended up one of the richest men in America. When you met him, he'd be wearing an old sweater. He didn't have a huge wardrobe or the same suits to meetings. And he had no bills at all. But when he wanted to go somewhere, he'd fly in his private $25 million jet all by himself. Now back to the last rule for achieving financial independence. Rule number four is once you put the money away, never touch it. Now this is important. So if you're writing it down, write it in red. You see, many of us make the mistake of thinking that if you save money, you put that money away so you can have it. It's fun money. So when you decide, I want to buy a car, I want to go on a trip, I want a boat, I want a motorhome, you go and you get this money that you saved. However, if you want to spend money on those things, set up a separate savings account. This money is for your financial security. This is your financial freedom fund. Once you put money into this financial freedom account, you lock it in like a one-way door. It goes in and it never comes out. You'll never spend it. I can tell you all kinds of stories about how this will change your life, including in my life. Please believe me. Once you put it away and decide that you will never spend it, as far as you're concerned, it's gone forever. I personally will do whatever is necessary, no matter what my financial emergency is, to not touch my financial fortress. Never touch it, because if you even think for a tiny glimmer that you can get it if you need it, then you'll find yourself needing it at the first opportunity. So, the key to financial success is to pay yourself first, save 10% off of your account, buy used things rather than new, and once you put money away, never, never touch it. Put it away and let it stay there until it accumulates and enables you to do anything you want in life. Today in America, it's a little different because of the state of the economy. And of course if you really bought low and sold high, but very few of us did that. A 10 to 20% per year after taxes and expenses in terms of growing your net worth is a pretty good goal and it's ultimately achievable. So, write down five figures representing your target net worth over the next five years. It seems remarkable. But the fact is that the starting point of increasing your income or your net worth is very simple. Can you guess what it is? Decide to do it. Make a decision to become financially independent. You say, well, it's not that simple. Well, it is that simple. It's just not easy. But it is simple. The primary reason that people don't succeed in life financially is because they never decide to. And then back up that decision with determination. Now there are a lot of things you can do after you've made a decision. But there are very few things you can do before making a decision, or without making a decision at all. So, make that decision. Your decision may be wrong or it may be inaccurate, but at least it's a great starting point. It's like drawing a line in the ground to step over. And what if I don't get it by such and such a date? Don't worry about it. At least get it on paper and take the first step. Once upon a time when I started my career, I sat down at the end of the year, and my tax returns were $14,400. Twelve years later, I sat down and did my tax returns, and my tax returns were $1,440,000. I'd increased my income by a hundred times in twelve years. And I went back and I started to look at that. And I realized that I'd used a formula which I gradually articulated into what I called the thousand percent formula. And it's very simple. It's based on the law of incremental improvement. Japanese call it the Kaizen principle. The principle of continuous betterment, getting a little bit better every day. So I asked the question, if you could increase your productivity, performance and output by one tenth of one percent per day, could you do that? Could you increase your productivity, performance and output by one one thousandth in a day? And the answer is, of course, if you're even a tiny bit more efficient, or you worked a little bit harder on a more important task, you could become a tenth of a percent better in a day. Well, if you did that every single day for a week, you would be one-tenth of one percent times five, you'd be one-half of one percent more productive in a week. Is that possible? Of course you would say. Anybody can become that small amount more productive. So, I said, if you did that every week for four weeks, you'd be two percent more productive over the course of a month. If you did that every day for thirteen four-week months in a year, fifty-two weeks, you would be twenty-six percent more productive. Is that possible? And the answer is yes. 
because there is a thing in success called the momentum principle. That means that once you start going, it becomes easier and easier to keep going and to go faster and faster. So once you've become 26% more productive in the course of a year, your overall output, your results, your income will go up by 26%. What happens is you start to get into the swing of it. You start to be more effective, more efficient, and get more things done. You start earlier. You work harder, you stay later, you set better priorities, and so on. So, if you do this 26% each year for 10 years, you'll be 1,004% better. And this is what happened to me, and it's happened to every single person I've ever worked with. Not long ago I was in Seattle, and this young man came up to me. He's about 30. I met him when he was about 22. He was working in a used car lot in a small town outside of Portland, and his name is Chris. And he came up and he said, Mr. Tracy, do you remember me? I said, yes, it's a nice guy, great personality. He said, well, you know that thousand percent formula that you taught me many years ago? I said, well, of course I remember because I've taught it to so many people. He said, Brian, it doesn't work. I said, it doesn't work? He said, it doesn't work. I said, I've used it every single day ever since you taught it to me all those years ago. He said, it doesn't work. I said, how do you mean? And he made me smile. And he said, it doesn't take 10 years, it only took me 7. He said, today I am earning 10 times what I was earning 7 years ago. He said, I used it every day, it's absolutely amazing. He said, I'm making more money today in a week or a month than I was often making in a month or a year. He said, by using that formula. And what I did personally is I used it once, increased my income 10 times, and then I used it again, and increased my income 10 times more, 100 times in 12 years. And so can you. There are two great principles of wealth attainment, and they're both equally important to understand and implement in order to be successful and acquire wealth. The first principle of wealth creation is to make compound interest work in your favor. Einstein said that compound interest is the most powerful force in the universe. Get that money in there and get it working for you. Peter Lynch of Magellan said that it's not timing the market that makes you rich. It's time in the market that makes you rich. Remember, if you invested $1 at 3% at the time of Christ, you'd be worth all the money in the world today with compound interest. Compound interest is phenomenal. So, make it work in your favor by getting the money in there early and leaving it there to work. The second principle of wealth creation is to use dollar cost averaging. When you buy stocks, don't worry about being right every time or getting the lowest price when you buy. It doesn't really matter unless of course stocks are overpriced at the end of a boom. But if you invest a steady amount of money every week, or every month or every year, you'll end up buying things at the average price. The prices will go up and down, but you'll end up buying them high, buying them low, buying them average. And over time, you'll get the very best average deal. Dollar cost averaging is one of the great techniques for financial success. Now here's an example of dollar cost averaging. Investing steady, 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 year after year. I have a good friend who came over here as an immigrant at the age of 17, couldn't even speak English. So, he began to learn English, and when he was 20 years old, he could speak enough English to begin studying financial success and going to college. Well, I had dinner with him not long ago. He has a four-acre property and a 16,000-square-foot home in a beautiful community on the East Coast. He's worth millions of dollars today. He owns banks, shopping centers, and national corporations. Here's what happened. When he was 20, someone told him that real estate is the key to financial success. They're not making any more of it. You should own real estate. Well, he never thought about that. And at that time, he was a student and didn't have very much money. But he was working evenings and weekends to pay for his needs. Which is what they used to do in those days. So he decided he would buy one piece of property each year. His first piece of property was in a small community outside of town. And it was a lot. And it cost $25 a month to service it. He had to sweat bullets to make those monthly payments. But his goal was to buy one piece of property a year. And he kept on doing it. He's now 49 years old. The last piece of property he bought last year was a $225 million shopping center. He still buys one property a year, only now they're much, much bigger. The skill and experience and discipline that he developed over time in buying those properties 
which got bigger and bigger, made him a millionaire and then a multi-millionaire. So, what's your excuse? What's our excuse? We're surrounded by hundreds, thousands, even millions of these stories. What is our excuse? It's always one thing. What is it? It's lack of discipline. So, remember, the two great principles of wealth creation are making compound interest work for you by getting the money in there and working and using dollar cost averaging, whether it's buying stocks or real estate. Next is to maximize. Determine your special talents, abilities, and strengths, and focus on developing them to a higher level. And then multiply. Leverage yourself and your business with other people's customers, other people's knowledge, other people's abilities, other people's efforts, other people's money, and other people's resources. You've heard the old saying, it takes money to make money. Yes, that's true, but it doesn't have to be your money. It could be somebody else's money. And all successful people have developed the ability to call on the money of others. Why? It's because they do good work, they do good planning, and they take good care of their money, and people line up to give them more. There's now trillions of dollars of money waiting. I have a good friend, one of my business partners, multi-multi-millionaire, started with nothing. There was tens of millions of dollars, and he's sitting on a pool of money that he keeps at very low levels of interest. He said, I can't find a place to put it, and I will not put it until I find a place. If somebody could come along with any kind of a business proposition where the person has credibility and a track record and has a good business proposition, there's more money available than you can dream of. The money is there in torrents. It's like tsunamis of money that are available. So that's why you're reading the paper. You read such and such company just paid $1.8 billion, or 2.6 or 9.9, .9, or Google just offered Groupon $6 billion cash for their business. There's lots of money for good business ideas. But it doesn't have to be your money. It can be somebody else's money. And your ability to attract that money and to justify it is really important. Strategic planning is an essential part of the success formula. Your ability to create a clear and organized strategic plan will largely contribute to your success and wealth. In fact, it's virtually impossible to succeed greatly unless you have a clear idea of where you're going and how to get there. So, here are three key factors to remember when devising a strategic plan. Number one, you are in business for yourself. This means that everything that is ever going to happen to your personal success corporation, your personal business, is up to you. No one else can be expected to do it for you. Now here's a perverse law. The more that you accept that you are responsible for doing whatever it is, the more others will line up to help you. So therefore, you say these words. If it's to be, it's up to me. Number two. Your aim in strategic planning is to increase your return on energy. We call this ROE. Now, the purpose of strategic planning in business is to increase return on equity, ROE. Return on capital working in the organization. But your capital is mental, emotional, and human. Your job is to get the most out of your mental, emotional, and intellectual capital. Your job is to get the highest return on the amount of your life invested in your work. Number three. Successful individuals also have good personal strategic plans. Because a good strategic plan assures that you will get the highest return on the amount of energy that you invest in anything you do. In this sense, you can achieve success by sitting quietly in contemplation, rather than constantly pursuing external accomplishments. Achievement is considerably different from mere accomplishment. It refers to obtaining what you truly desire, rather than settling for what you happen to get. Achievement means having the ability to set clear goals, make detailed plans of action, and then implement those plans, overcoming obstacles and adversity to attain the ends you have set for yourself. The laws of success apply equally well to achievement, but in addition, there are a series of laws specific to goal attainment, which we'll describe in this session. The basic rule of human action is that everything you do is aimed at improving your life in some way. Every action is guided by purpose and intention, whether clear or unclear. Your mind and abilities enable you to achieve the goals you set for yourself. Whether your goal is small, like returning home to watch television, or large, such as achieving financial success and prestige, your mind contains a goal-seeking function that drives you towards your ideals. The challenge lies in setting clear goals and channeling your mental and physical energy towards them. When you learn to do this, achievement seems to happen almost automatically. However, the setting of clear goals and harnessing your energy behind them is essential for success. As mentioned in the first session, the application of these laws begins with becoming perfectly clear about your desired outcome.
you need to determine where you want to end up and create a written plan of action for achieving each of those things. Unfortunately, studies show that fewer than 3% of adults have clear, written goals and detailed plans. However, people with written goals accomplish 10 times as much as those with no written goals at all. In my seminars, I often encourage participants to write down 10 things they want to achieve in the next 12 months. This simple exercise often leads to remarkable results. For example, an insurance executive attending one of my seminars made a list of 10 goals and was astonished to find that he had already accomplished five of them within a few days. Aside from clarity regarding your goals, there are 12 laws you need to know and practice for high achievement. The first law is the law of control, which states that you feel positive about yourself to the degree to which you feel in control of your own life. Control is critical for success, as it allows you to direct the course of change and ensures that it aligns with your desires. The second law is the law of responsibility, which asserts that you are completely responsible for everything you are, have, and become. Responsibility begins with taking full control of your thoughts and actions. No one is coming to the rescue. If things are going to improve, it's up to you. To achieve success, you must first decide exactly what you want in life. Make a dream list of everything you could ever want to have, be, or do, without limitations. Then, prioritize your goals and transfer them to a separate sheet of paper. This exercise helps you clarify your desires and motivates you to take action towards achieving them. Go back over these goals and organize them by writing a 1 next to the most important goal, a 2 next to the second most important goal, a 3 next to the third most important goal, and so on until you've organized all of your goals in order of importance to you. Your one goal should be your major definite purpose, the most important single goal in your life. All really successful men and women have goals in each important part of their lives. But they also have one goal which is their umbrella goal, the single most important thing they are working on at any given time. In looking at your goals, it's advisable for you to divide them into three categories as well. The first category is your personal and family goals. These are the reasons why you're doing what you're doing. It's very important for you to be crystal clear about the underlying reasons why you want the material and intangible goals that you're working for. Many people get sidetracked working for material things and lose sight of the reasons why they're doing it. Your second set of goals are your career and material goals. These are the what of your goal list. These are the things that you have to do in order to get to the why. The what are business and financial goals on your list, such as career achievements, amounts of financial income, quantities of sales or profits. They're the money and the things of your life. Your third type of goals are your personal development goals. These are the how goals. These are the things that you must do or become competent at doing in order to achieve the Material goals, which will lead you to the accomplishment of your personal and family goals. You need to have a set of goals in each of these areas for your life to be in balance and for you to perform at your very best. Once you've taken your original list of goals and broken it down by A's, B's and C's, and then transferred your A's onto a single page and organized them in order of priority, you're now ready to begin the planning stage. In the planning stage, you take a clean sheet of paper and you write your A1 goal at the top of the page in the present tense as though it were already a reality. For example, you could write, I earn $50,000 per year now. You use what we call the 20 idea method and write down a list of 20 things that you could do that would help you move toward the attainment of that goal. Write down everything you can think of. For example, you could write down, I could work harder and smarter in my current field and increase my productivity and income. You could also write down, I could upgrade my skills so that the value of my work was higher in the same period of time. Or, you could write something completely different, such as, I could change my career or company completely and start a different job or in a different industry. In any case, write down at least 20 activities that you could engage in to help you achieve your goal. Once you've done that, do the same thing for each of your other goals so that you have a series of goals with a list of 20 activities or more that you could engage in to accomplish each one. Sit down with your first list of 20 items under your one most important goal and organize those items by time and priority. Which are the things which you can do or should do or begin first? What are the things that are most important and would make the greatest difference to the attainment of the goal? Write down an A, B or C next to each of the 20 items and then write down a 1, 2, 3 for A items and 1, 2, 3 for B items and so on 
next to the items so that you have organized them from beginning to end. You now have a list of your most important goals organized by priority, and a list of the activities you must engage in to achieve those goals, also organized by priority. Your final exercise is to merge your major goals and your major activities into a single plan, and then to begin to organize your day-to-day -day life around that plan. It's important that you review this plan on a regular basis. One of the most motivational things that you can do is to make a resolution to do something every day, to move yourself toward the attainment of one of your most important goals. This will help you to develop and maintain momentum. And you'll be astonished at how rapidly you begin to make progress on even the largest and most challenging goals that you can think of using this method. Once you've made a list of your goals, the third law of achievement is the law of compensation. This law says that you are always fully compensated for whatever you do. It's often called the law of reciprocity, which says that people will always reciprocate in kind for whatever you do, either to or for them. My friend Zig Ziglar, the great speaker and motivator, has formulated what we might call Ziglar's Law, which is a paraphrase of the Law of Compensation, and it says, you can have anything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. The Law of Compensation is a subset of the Law of Cause and Effect, or the Law of Sowing and Reaping, which says, whatsoever a man saith, that also shall he reap. Basically, the Law of Compensation says that whatever you put in, you get out. You cannot reap it unless you have sown it in advance. In fact, you can say that whatever you're reaping today is a measure of what you've sown in the past. If you want to reap something more in the future, you have to sow something more or different or better in the present. It's completely up to you. In Ralph Waldo Emerson's wonderful essay Compensation, which is one of the finest pieces of writing in the English language, he says that the longer you put in without getting out, the greater will be your return when it finally comes. Some years ago, the Kingston Trio had a song with a line that said, You've got to prime the pump. You must have faith and believe. You've got to give of yourself before you're willing to receive. This law or principle runs throughout all of human history and is virtually inviolate. This leads us to the fourth law of achievement, the law of service, which says that your rewards in life will always be in direct proportion to the value of your service to others. The first part of this law is that all fortunes begin with the sale of personal services. The second part of this law is that if you wish to increase the size of your rewards, you must increase the quality and quantity of your service. The third part of the law of service is everyone works on commission. Tom Peters, in his book In Search of Excellence, says that the top managers and the leading companies all seem to have an obsession with customer service. The most successful men and women in our society are those who are able to lose themselves in serving the people who depend upon them, their customers, their employers, and others. When you combine the laws of compensation and of service, you have the key to obtaining anything that you really want. You'll get out exactly what you put in, and wonderfully enough, you have complete control over what you put in. When you devote yourself completely to serving your customers, your boss, your staff, and the people who purchase or use your products and services, it gives you a tremendous feeling of meaning and purpose. It causes you to feel that you are really making a difference in the world. The fifth law of achievement is the law of applied effort. This law simply says that all things are amenable to hard work. There's nothing that will bring you to the attention of your superiors faster than you're developing a reputation for being a hard worker. People who are in a position to help you and accelerate your career will tend to be very impressed by your willingness to work harder and longer than anyone else. In Dr. Thomas Stanley's study of affluent Americans, almost every one of the self-made millionaires he interviewed told him that their success was due more to hard work than to any other factor. In America, you work 40 hours per week for survival. If all you work is 40 hours, all you get is enough money to survive. You tread water, and you basically stay even, but you don't get very far ahead, and you never achieve the kind of success that is possible for you. However, every hour over 40 hours that you put in either on your job or on yourself improving your knowledge and skills is an investment in your success. You can tell where you're going to be in three to five years with unerring accuracy by simply looking at the number of hours over 40 that you're working each week. The average work week for both executives and small business owners in America is approximately 58 to 59 hours. Many successful men and women find themselves working 70 and even 80 hours a week during the critical formative stages of their careers. In addition to the law of applied effort, 
is that all great success is preceded by a long period of hard work in a single direction toward a clearly defined purpose. You need to continually ask yourself, what am I trying to do and how am I trying to do it? It's not enough just to work hard or to work long hours. You must be working on high value added tasks and activities toward the accomplishment of meaningful and important goals. A second part of this law is that the harder you work, the luckier you get. It seems that your ability to work hard will open up the Red Sea of opportunity for you and will bring to your assistance all manner of people and resources that you could not have imagined would come your way. The third part of the law of applied effort is that to achieve more than the average, you must work longer and harder than the average. This is simply a way of restating the fact that you can only take more out of life if you're putting more into life, and the more you put in, the more you'll get out. The law of cause and effect is absolute. You will invariably reap what you sow, and if you sow more, you'll eventually reap more. The sixth law of achievement is the law of overcompensation. This is a companion law to the law of applied effort, and it simply says that you must be continually looking for opportunities to go beyond the requirements of your job. Napoleon Hill, perhaps the foremost researcher on success in the first half of the 20th century, concluded that one of the keys to great success in America was the willingness to go the extra mile. He wrote that because of this principle, your future potential is unlimited, because there's no restriction whatsoever on the extra things that you can do to add greater value to your work. You can go the extra mile in everything that you do every day, and in every way. You can always be looking for opportunities to exceed expectations. Earl Nightingale advised that you should always put in more than you take out, or you'll never take out more than you're getting right now. The only way that you can be paid more is by putting greater value into your work and achieving greater results. Another way of stating the law of overcompensation is that you must always do more than you're paid for if you ever want to be paid for more than you're doing. A young woman who was working as a secretary for a large company in Florida came to me at a seminar recently and told me her story. She said that she'd listened to one of my audio tapes, and as a result, she had set a goal to increase her income by 50%. In her heart, she said she didn't really believe it was possible because of the salary structure in her company. Nonetheless, she went to work to increase the value of her service to her boss. She applied the law of overcompensation to everything she did. She learned how to do new things and she began a little earlier and stayed a little later. To make a long story short, within six months, her boss had quietly raised her salary in stages from $1,500 per month to $2,150 per month and had given her these increases without her ever having asked for them. All she did was to concentrate on seeking out ways to work harder and smarter and to serve her boss better with the things he needed. He automatically increased her pay because he recognized how much she had increased her value to him. The remarkable thing is this. She worked up to the age of 25 to get her salary up to $1,500 per month in just six months. However, by applying these principles, she increased her salary by 50%, and so can you. It is simply a matter of applying these laws to your work on a daily basis. Success is not an accident. Failure is not an accident either. I also discovered that people who are successful in any area are usually those who have learned the cause and effect relationships between what they wanted and how to get it. They then did repeatedly what other successful people did in a particular area until they got the same results. This insight changed my life. No one is really better than you, and no one is really smarter than you. They just may be better or smarter in different ways, at least for the present. If someone is doing better than you are today, it's probably because he or she has discovered the cause and effect relationships before you have. And anything that anyone else has done, within limits, you can do as well. The fact that someone else has achieved a worthy goal is the very best proof that you can achieve that goal as well. Personal and professional development is the most powerful tool that you can use to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. Elevate yourself from wherever you are to wherever you want to go by simply learning how others have done it before you and then by following the paths that they have already blazed. You've heard it said that the average person uses only 10% of his or her potential. According to the Stanford Brain Institute, however, it is actually closer to 2%. The average person has enormous reserves of potential that he or she habitually fails to use. Nature is exceedingly generous. She provides each person with an abundance of abilities and possibilities, most of which go untapped throughout life. If you were to use only a small additional percentage of your inborn capabilities, you could probably double and triple your results. You could accomplish things far beyond anything that you have ever done up to now. 
You could be healthier, happier, and more prosperous than you've ever imagined. I believe that each person has the potential to do something wonderful with his or her life. I believe that within each person, there is a giant waiting to come out. I believe that each person can do vastly more than he or she has ever done before, if he or she only learns how. That's my fundamental value. What is yours? Create a long-term vision for yourself in the area of personal growth. Project forward 5 or 10 years and imagine that you have developed fully in every important part of your life. Idealize and see yourself as outstanding in every respect. Refuse to compromise on your personal dreams. What level of skill or ability would you have in your field? What level of status and prestige would you have attained as a result of your superb performance at? What you do? What kind of work would you be doing? And at what level would you be doing this work? How would you think and feel about yourself as a result of being one of the very best at what you do? If you had no limitations at all, what would be your vision for how you would develop yourself in the months and years ahead? Now take your vision and crystallize it into specific goals. Here's a good way to start. Take out a piece of paper and write down 10 goals that you would like to achieve in the area of personal and professional development in the months and years ahead. Write in the present tense, exactly as if you were already the person you intend to be. What do you want to be able to do? Decide the person you want to become. Describe exactly what you will look like when you become truly excellent in your field and your personal life. Then, review this list of 10 goals and select the one goal that, if you achieved it, would have the greatest positive impact on your life and your career. Put a circle around that goal and move that goal to a clean sheet of paper. Create a schedule for achieving this goal. Set deadlines for achieving certain benchmarks. Set sub-deadlines as well. Make a list of everything that you can think of that you'll have to do to achieve personal excellence in that area. Organize your list into a plan by setting priorities on each of the items. Gather the books, materials, equipment, and other resources you will need to begin working on yourself and your goal. Then, take immediate action on at least one item in your plan to get the process started. Resolve to do something every day until you are successful in that area. Never stop working on yourself until you become the kind of person you would ideally most like to be. Set specific measures on each of your goals. If your goal is to excel in your field, determine how you'll be able to know when you've achieved it. Decide how you could measure your progress and evaluate your success. Perhaps you can use as a measure the number of hours that you study in your field each week. Perhaps you can measure the number of books you read or the number of audio programs that you listen to. Perhaps you can measure your progress by the number of appointments you get or the number of sales you make as a result of your growing skills. Compare yourself against these measures on a regular basis. The more precise your measures and the more you pay attention to them, the better you will become in that area, and the greater progress you will make. You first determine your values, your vision, your goals, and the knowledge and skills you will require to achieve them. You decide upon the ways that you will measure your progress toward each of them. You then do something every day that makes you better in some way. You read, take courses, listen to audio programs, and practice your new skills, and never stop improving. Select the specific habits and behaviors that you will need to practice every day to become the person you want to become. These could be the habits of clarity, planning, thoroughness, studiousness, hard work, determination, and persistence. Perhaps the most important single quality for success is self-discipline. Albert Hubbard, the writer, defines self-discipline as the ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. Napoleon Hill called self-discipline the master key to riches. Every day, and every hour of every day, you have to practice self-discipline. There are seven disciplines that you must develop if you want to achieve all that is possible for you. You can learn each of these disciplines through practice and repetition until they become automatic. Here they are. 1. The Discipline of Daily Goal Setting 2. The Discipline of Daily Planning and Organizing 3. The discipline of daily priority setting. So, the discipline of daily concentration on your highest value activities. 5. The discipline of daily exercise and proper nutrition. 6. The discipline of daily learning and growth. 7. The discipline of taking time daily for the most important people in your life. These seven disciplines will virtually assure that you perform at the very highest level and get the greatest satisfaction and results from everything you do. There's a simple, practical, proven self-development formula that you can use to double your income in the years ahead. 
Most people who practice this formula each day report extraordinary improvements in their lives. Try it and see for yourself. I call it the thousand percent formula. This thousand percent formula is based on the law of incremental improvement. No matter how excited or determined you are, change and progress take place slowly. It takes your entire life to become the person you are today. It takes a period of hard work and determination to become someone different. We do not usually make significant and lasting changes in quantum leaps. All permanent change is progressive over a long period of time. This type of change requires patience and discipline. It is only this type of change that is truly worthwhile and enduring. If you continually learn, study and upgrade your skills, clarify and re-clarify your goals, set better and clearer priorities, and focus on progressively more valuable tasks, you could increase your overall productivity, performance and output by one-tenth of one percent each day, day after day, indefinitely. Because of the law of increasing returns, every effort you make to be more productive in one area will tend to improve your performance in every other area at the same time. You will get better and better results in less time the more you practice. If you become one-tenth of one percent more productive each day, five days per week, at the end of one week, you will be one-half of one percent more productive. That's one-tenth of a percent times five equals 0 0.5 or half a percent. At the end of four weeks, you will be two percent more productive. That's four times half a percent equals two percent. At the end of 52 weeks, you will be 26 percent more productive than you were at the beginning of the year, which is 13 four-week months times two percent per month equals 26 percent. This is where the compounding effect of new knowledge and skill begins to work. An improvement of 26 percent per year compounded over 10 years, will result in an increase of 1,004% in your overall productivity in one decade. Now, since we live in a merit-based society, as you increase your ability to contribute value, the amount you will be paid will increase as well. By improving your overall performance by 1,004%, your income will eventually rise to match the value of your contribution. Well, here are the seven steps in the thousand percent formula that will guarantee that you become at least one-tenth of one percent better daily. 1.5% better each week, 2% better each month, and 26% better each year. 1. Arise 2 hours before your first appointment and read for 1 hour in your field. This is called the golden hour, and it sets the tone for the rest of the day. Leave the television off, put the newspaper aside, invest the first 60 minutes in yourself and in your mind. This first hour is the rudder of the day. 2. Rewrite and review your major goals each day. Before you start off, take a few minutes to write out your goals in a spiral notebook in the present tense, as though you had already achieved them. This programs them into your subconscious mind to be alert for opportunities to achieve your goals all day long. 3. Plan every day in advance. Friends, make a list of everything that you have to do the night before, before you end your work day, and before you go to bed. This enables your subconscious mind to work on your list while you sleep. Often when you awake in the morning, you'll have ideas and insights that will enable you to achieve your daily goals faster and more effectively. 4. Always concentrate on the most valuable use of your time. Select the one task that can have the greatest positive impact on your work life and begin on that task first thing in the morning. 5. Listen to educational audio programs in your car. Turn your car into a mobile classroom, the university on wheels. Never allow your car to be moving without educational audio programs playing. This activity is so powerful that it alone can give you your thousand percent increase over the years ahead. 6. Ask two questions after every experience. These are really magic questions in that they enable you to learn and grow more rapidly from everything that happens to you. The questions are, 1. What did I do right? 2. What would I do differently? According to the law of concentration, whatever you dwell upon grows in your experience. Whatever you pay attention to increases in your life. Whatever you focus on, you tend to do better. 7. The seventh and final ingredient in the thousand percent formula is for you to treat everyone you meet like a million dollar customer. Treat the people you work with the same way you would treat a valuable customer of your firm. Treat each prospect or customer as if they had already purchased a million dollars worth of what your company sells and we're thinking of doing it again. Especially treat the people at home as though they were the most valuable people in the world to you. Because they are. Remember, you are your most valuable resource. Your earning ability is your most valuable asset. 
Invest every day in improving yourself as a person and in increasing your ability to earn even more. Decide today to develop yourself to the point where you can achieve every financial and personal goal you have ever set and become everything you are capable of becoming. Thank you.